which they worked so hard to win. And what we have said to them is, we hear them. I want to do a special thanks, one, to Jim Banks mm -hmm. for making this at the forefront of an issue, to Congressman Greg Stubbe on his bill, Debbie Lesko on her bill as well. We have a discharge petition onto the floor. We only need 18 more members to sign it so we could bring it up. Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats want to stop this. And this is not a partisan issue. This is about fairness for women in America. But we make this pledge to you. If the Democrats continue to hold back, if they continue to stop this, we will not stop fighting. And if we are successful in 138 days, we will bring this to the floor. We will pass it, and we will fight together to change the course. And we will be able to celebrate the real reasons why Title IX was created and the successes that will be able to happen after we correct that. With that, let me bring up the youngest member in the Republican conference, Kat Kamek. Athlete as well. <laughs> Well, good afternoon. My name is Kat Kamak. I proudly represent Florida's third congressional district, the Gator Nation. So go Gators. <laughs> and I am a woman. Today, that is kind of ridiculous that we have to state that fact, uh, but it's science and we are following the, sci the science. You know, uh, we just had an incredibly powerful hearing where we heard from world-class athletes women who have excelled in their fields and they are being punished for it. We are a nation of equal opportunity, not equal outcome. And what we have been seeing in recent years is the continued efforts to take away women's sports as we know it. We will have boys sports and we will have co-ed sports if this is to continue. Their stories are amazing. Women who were denied state championships, women who tied men and were sidelined and told, no, you can't have the trophy, we'll mail it to you. The woke mob, the limousine liberals who want to claim that they uphold the values of America, of equality, they aren't, but Republicans are, and we are fighting for these women. We are fighting on the 50th anniversary of Title IX to make sure that every little girl has the same opportunity that so many before her have had. And these women who stand behind me, they don't just represent a bipartisan effort to save women's sports. This is a multi-generational effort. These women represent millennials, and Gen Z's who are truly on the front lines of this assault. Their stories are powerful and they will change the outcome of not just elections, but the trajectory of our nation. I wanna thank future speaker McCarthy for his leadership. I wanna thank Jim Banks, my friend and colleague who has done tremendous work in leading this effort and championing this effort through the Republican Study Committee. I wanna thank my fellow Floridian and friend, Representative Greg Stubbe, for his efforts to save Title IX, and of course, from the great state of Arizona, Debbie Lesko, for having the courage to stand up, step forward, and say, we are going to champion women's rights, and has put forward an incredible piece of legislation upholding women's rights. You don't need to hear from us. Uh, uh, legislators, we are here to do the work on behalf of these incredible athletes that stand behind me. But I will say, walking over here, a reporter showed me a photo and a video of Vice President Harris playing basketball. And as a former basketball player myself, I did say I would challenge her to a one-on-one -on -one competition. Now, if I win, she's got to go to the border. But with that, I want to bring up a woman who has been fighting on the front lines, doing incredible work to bring women across this country together to protect and fight for Title IX, Ms. Christiana Kiefer. Thank you. Thank you.
Well, good afternoon. It is a delight to be here with you today. My name is Christiana Kiefer, and I am Senior Counsel with Alliance Defending Freedom. We are the only organization in the nation to have filed a federal lawsuit on behalf of female athletes to defend their rights under Title IX. Title IX has promised women so much. When it was passed 50 years ago, it was designed to ensure that women had equal educational and athletic opportunities. It promised them a spot on the field, a spot on their own podium, the opportunity to showcase their talents, to earn those college scholarship opportunities. But today, those opportunities are being denied to women and girls across the country. I represent female athletes like Chelsea Mitchell, who is here with us today. She lost four state championship titles to two biological males who competed in the state of Connecticut. Selena Soule, another client, lost the opportunity to advance to the next level of competition and instead watched her own event from the sideline of a very elite event due to a biological male. Alana Smith lost the opportunity as a freshman at a very elite event to be named runner-up, which would have been quite an honor. Instead, she was bumped down in the rankings due to a biological male. Madison Kenyon and Mary Kate Marshall both have repeatedly lost to a male athlete in their collegiate competition across the state of Idaho. And Lainey Armistead, who is here helping to defend her state's Save Women's Sports Law against attacks by activists and the ACLU. Title IX promised these women so much, but activists and the Biden administration are slowly turning back the clock on women's rights. This is wrong. Women deserve better. And if we want a future where young women can continue to showcase their talents, to be on the podium, to be named the champion, and earn those college scholarship opportunities, we must protect the integrity of women's sports. And with that, I want to invite up Chelsea Mitchell. Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea Mitchell and I'm a former high school track and field athlete from Canton High School and I was ranked one of the fastest girls in Connecticut. When I lined up in my starting blocks, I should have known that I had a shot at first place. Unfortunately, I was forced to compete against male athletes in the female category for all four years of my high school career. As a result of this state policy that let them compete in girls sports, I lost out on four state championship titles and two all New England awards. Girls deserve fair competitions. When we're given those opportunities, we can excel. When those opportunities are threatened or taken away, we lose. While this issue is very personal for me, it's not just about me. It's about every young woman who dreams of competing. We should have the opportunity to succeed and to chase our dreams. And this can only happen if we can compete on a level playing field. We should be here celebrating 50 years of Title IX protections. Instead, we're here because we don't know if those protections will last another 15 years. Thank you. Well, we well done. Good job. At this time, we'd like to welcome Jennifer Bracera. Where is she? Oh, there she is. Hi, Jennifer Braceras with Independent Women's Forum and Independent Women's Law Center. Several years ago, IWF warned the United States Supreme Court that if they reinterpreted laws that prohibit sex discrimination to cover gender identity, that that would have terrible repercussions for women's sports. After the Bostock decision came down, doing just that, uh, uh, interpreting sex to mean gender identity in the case of Title VII, we were told that our concerns weren't serious, that Title IX and Title, Title VII are separate statutes, that, that the reasoning of the Bostock decision wouldn't be applied to Title IX. Well, guess what? Today, that happened. The Biden administration released regulations reinterpreting the word sex under Title IX to mean gender identity, citing the precedent of the Bostock decision. This is wrong. We know what sex means. We know what woman means. Sex and gender are not the same thing. Sex and gender identity are not the same thing. And if Congress wants to pass laws to protect different categories, they can consider doing that. But the Biden administration should not be rewriting federal law behind closed doors to achieve secretly what they couldn't achieve through the democratic process. Here to talk about some of the impact that all of this has had on women's sports is Cynthia Montalone, a master's track athlete from Hawaii.
Aloha, my name is Cynthia Monteleon and I took the very long flight from Maui to be here today. I uh, actually should have been on a plane to Finland to compete at my next world championship meet. I'm the defending 400 meter world champion for my age group. Um, however, I chose to be here today instead because that uh, World Masters Association meet is including biological males in the female category. In fact, the same biological male that I raced is racing again. I raised concerns about this issue, and I've, as I've been told in the past, it was uh, basically swept under the rug, and I was told there's nothing that can be done. Well, guess what? There is something that can be done. I can be here speaking today, encouraging and empowering other women and other people to keep speaking up for fairness in women's sports. I'm from Maui, which is the home of Patsy Mink, who is the co-founder of Title IX. And Patsy Mink struggled uh, to create this, uh, basically this regulation so that women and girls could have fair opportunities. In no way, shape, or form did she include the word gender or gender identity in the language. And if the intention was inclusion, then our females are being excluded. The girls here today telling their stories, they're being excluded from these same opportunities that Patsy Mink fought for. So it's, uh, this current interpretation is showing exclusion. And I am very disappointed in the Biden administration's ruling today, especially coming from Maui. I just want to also say that not only have I had the experience, but a year and a half after my experience, my daughter lined up for her very first high school race in ninth grade against a biological male athlete. So you can't tell me, no one can tell me this is not happening because it happened to both of us. Not only that, but I witnessed my girls that I coach have anxiety attacks at the very thought of lining up next to someone who doesn't have to work as hard as them. They are having these mental health anxiety issues and I would like to ask where are the studies and where are the questions about the mental health uh, issues with our female athletes? What, a, what about the mental health of, that, of their experiences? Let's talk about that instead of just one side. Uh, so I just want to say mahalo, thank you again uh, to everyone for having me today to share my experience and I will continue to speak up and speak out for a fair playing field for future generations of girls and women. Mahalo. Uh, at this time, I would like to bring up uh, Chairman Jim Banks. And while he's making his way up here, oh, he's right behind me. I do want to say these girls didn't lose their titles. They didn't lose podiums. They were stolen. These podiums, these titles, these awards, they were stolen from them. And that is something that needs to be rectified. So with that, champion, Representative Jim Banks. Thank you, Kat. Um, thank you. All of you for being here today. We, we just held, a, as Leader McCarthy said, we just held a hearing in the Rayburn House Office Building and heard a number of powerful testimonies from these, uh, these female athletes of what they've dealt with. And, uh, and I want all of them to know, first and foremost, that we hear you. We, we heard your stories. We, we've, we've listened to you. This isn't a matter of, uh, uh, of, um, of politics. This isn't about liberal and liberals versus conservatives. Behind me, we have young women who are conservative and we have young women who are liberal. Uh, over 70% of the American people are, are on the side, though, that boys shouldn't be allowed to compete against girls in sports, that men shouldn't be allowed to compete against women in sports. So this is a matter of fairness. It's very personal to me. I'm a girl dad. I have three daughters, and I love to watch each of them compete in sports. And this is about whether or not Title IX will, will uh, protect their right to do that. Fifty years ago today, Title IX was signed into law. It was actually a, a Hoosier senator who was, is called the father of Title IX one of the authors of that important law 50 years ago. He was a liberal Democrat. Today, I don't think he would recognize this law that allows men to compete against women and boys to compete against girls. So in conclusion, I want you to know that as chairman of the largest caucus on Capitol Hill, the Republican Study Committee, we've put um, your, your, uh, your concerns, the, the, the testimonies that you provided us, say we put it into action and we have a plan and you heard a little bit ago, you heard the Republican leader, Kevin McCarthy, say that he is committed 
to taking that plan and, and uh, advancing it as a part of the Republican agenda next uh, January. But in the meantime, we're still at work fighting uh, for this important cause. Um, Debbie Lesko, my colleague from Arizona, introduced the Women's Bill of Rights. And we have dozens of Republican co-sponsors who have signed on to that, recognizing the differences between men and women and fighting for women and the important role that they play in our society. Greg Stubbe behind me from Florida has a bill to save women's sports. It's a common sense bill. And uh, he, he too has dozens of, of co-sponsors, all Republicans who have signed onto that bill. I went down uh, to the well of the floor of the House and I filed a discharge petition to force a vote uh, to, to force Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, to put Greg Stubbe's bill on the floor for a vote. And we have nearly 200 signers who have signed on to that discharge petition. All Republicans, by the way, who have recognized the importance of this, of this issue, who have signed their name. We're not that far away, though, from just needing uh, just a dozen or more so uh, signers on to that discharge petition to force Greg Stubbe's bill to save girls' sports to come to a vote so that every representative has, a, has an opportunity to vote to make their voice heard. These are important issues, and uh, we take very seriously the message that all of you brought to share with us today, and we will continue to fight uh, for you with that. I think we can take a couple of questions. Anybody? If not, we'll get out of the humidity and uh, get back to work. But thank you very much to all of you for being a part of uh, this important cause today. God bless.